Conditions for your flight look good. Clear skies and very little wind. You taxi for takeoff. Everything seems okay. But something goes wrong when you get airborne. First your engine coughs, then misfires, cuts out, and then starts again. You become uncertain, confused, your mind races. Do you really have an engine problem? How bad is the power loss? Do you attempt to climb, or maintain height and figure out what's happening? Or should you make a fast turn back to the runway? The engine is still providing some power, but this power may be unreliable. Your pre-flight plan and what you do next can be the difference between life and death. Dealing with a partial power loss after takeoff is more complex than a complete failure after takeoff. It may come as a surprise that there are more fatal accidents following partial power losses than total power losses after the aircraft becomes airborne. Unfortunately, most of these fatal accidents result from the pilot losing control of the aircraft, and this is a situation that is largely avoidable. ATSB's investigations reveal that many partial power losses could have been prevented by thorough pre-flight checks. Reported causes of power loss include fuel starvation, spark plug failure, carburetor icing, and pre-ignition conditions. In many cases, these problems could have been identified before takeoff. Always conduct thorough pre-flight checks and an engine ground run, and ensure that there are no issues with the aircraft prior to commencing takeoff. The message for this is simple. If you don't know, don't go. It's better to be on the ground frustrated about a faulty aircraft than in the air with a major problem. If a partial power loss does occur, preparation and planning is the key to staying in control of your aircraft. As part of your pre-takeoff safety brief, think about the actions you would need to take if a total power loss or a partial power loss occurs. Consider the aerodrome environment, such as potential landing areas, wind direction, and hazards. Your plan of action will help you to focus on flying and will assist you in staying ahead of the aircraft and ultimately maintaining control. Your plan should include the same actions you would take when responding to a complete engine failure. Lower the nose to maintain best glide speed. Conduct initial troubleshooting checks if you have enough time. Keep your eyes outside most of the time to maintain situational awareness. Check your airspeed indicator to assess if the nose attitude is low enough to maintain airspeed. Check your altitude indicators to assess if the aircraft is climbing, descending or maintaining altitude. This will determine your best options for landing. Any manoeuvring to land should be done below your maximum planned bank angle, which must be less than 45 degrees, and make no turns when you're below 200 feet. Fly the aircraft to make a landing given the aircraft's height and performance. Try to land the aircraft as soon as possible. Surviving a landing in rough terrain is far better than losing control while trying to get to clear ground. Simply thinking about what you'll do following a partial power loss after takeoff will improve your ability in dealing with the situation should it arise. Be prepared to reassess your situation throughout any maneuver. Periodic checking of the airspeed indicator and conducting only gentle balanced maneuvers will assist you in maintaining control. Finally, if you do a pre-flight self-brief prior to each and every takeoff, you'll give yourself the best chance to walk away from the situation.